Hey everyone, radio communications equipment. So as a youngster, I did uh, all of my engineering training in electronics and radio comms. And subsequently, I'm an amateur radio enthusiast. It's been a long time since I've used it, but with recent events being what they are, I've had an opportunity to set up my equipment again. And all I wanted to do really was talk you through some of my equipment, a little bit about how it works, and also the benefits of it. If the satellites were to fall out of the sky or uh, people's mobile phones stop working, the internet stop working, communications would become very, very difficult. This here solves all of those problems. All you need is a battery, an aerial and this kit and you can talk with pretty much anybody around the world that's got a battery, aerial and this kit. So this is very useful equipment to have. Today, what I've done is rewire uh, all of the antenna cables, rewire the antenna outside of the house, resolder all of the connectors back onto the cables to make sure that they're good quality joints. And then I had a bit of fun playing around with it. So let me talk you through the kit. The thing at the top here is an antenna tuning unit. Then we've got a radio transceiver on the left hand side at the bottom. And then we've got a power supply on the right hand side at the bottom. And that's a 12 volt, 40 amp switch mode power supply. This here is an ICOM 706 Mark IIG transceiver. And this guy at the top is an MFJ made from junk. <laughs> Roller tuner, and actually I quite like it. It's quite useful for tuning random antenna cables. So for me, the benefit of this guy here, this antenna tuner, is you can chuck a random piece of cable out and using the inductors and the capacitors inside of this bad boy, you can effectively match your uh, length of cable, your random wire that you've put outside to suit the frequency that you're transmitting on here. So the first contact that I made was into Northern Italy. And uh, I spoke with Laro, uh, IK4GRO. station uh, very nice to work Italy today name is Howard name is Howard a QSL yes, Howard, you five and nine. Hours. Is Laura. Yeah, very nice to work you Laura thank you very much for the contact today it's the first time I've used my ham radio station for a long time so uh, very nice to work you today thank you for the HF contact uh, QSL Uh, name is Howard. Name is Howard. Hotel Oscar Whiskey Alpha, Romeo Delta. Yes, Howard. My call is India Kilo 4, Gold, Radio Oscar. Italy Kilo 4, Gold, Radio Ontario. QSL, Howard. Uh, QSL, QSL. Many thanks. 5 and 9 plus 20. 5 and 9 plus 20. A very strong signal into middle of England. The middle of England. Uh, QSL. QSL, QSL. Howard, thank you for your call, okay? Uh, thank you very much. 73 and, uh, and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy the chat today. Okay, 73 hour. Little bit of Morse code. <laughs> so this ICOM 706 Mark II G goes all the way from uh, about 1 megahertz all the way up to about 450 megahertz. That would include almost sort of your long, medium and short wave frequencies, not far off you know, right at the lower end of the spectrum where the old shortwave receivers, you would tune those bad boys in. And it will take you all the way up to the high frequencies that the police, the fire brigade, aircraft, all of those kinds of guys use. 
Key point to note, you need to be licensed to operate one of these uh, setups. You get various different categories of licensing. You get some which are uh, just basic operator's licenses, and then you get some that are sort of more uh, around the experimenter's license. Since I took Morse code when I was a kid and um, all that kind of madness and quite a few examinations in order to, uh, to get the full license. All of that to one side, it really is quite an interesting hobby and Heaven help us, if a disaster took place, this could be a primary piece of communications equipment used all around the world. So for the shortwave style of communications that this radio supports, you need a good antenna put in place. There's many ways to do this. I chose the simple option, which is to put an earth stake in the ground and then rig up a random long wire and make use of my Versa tuner. So the shortwave radio stations tend to have a much greater range. So for instance, you can work all around Europe quite commonly. Occasionally, you'll make a contact into somewhere a little bit more exotic, like the United States of America. Now, the other modes that my transceiver supports are VHF and UHF. And earlier, you saw a little white stick up on the roof, and that's the antenna that supports that local communication. Today, however, we've been playing around with the HF or high frequency bands, closer to shortwave sort of frequencies, just because they're a little bit more fun and a little bit more challenging, whereas UHF and VHF is much more line of sight. Anyway, here's a Russian military transmitter broadcasting. It's fun to listen to this guy. Ladies and gents, this is UVB 76. It's called the Buzzer, a Russian military communications station. My new aerial works. My ham rig works. Radio communications, in my humble opinion, amateur radio, in this case, is a very interesting subject to have a play around with. There's a broad spectrum of opportunities to mess around with various different bits of kit once you've got your license. And one final piece of equipment that I'd like to show you, and that is the uh, proverbial mag mount on the biscuit tin. Remember your old CB days. So basically what we've got here is we've got a mobile whip antenna, two meters and 70 centimeters, uh, or VHF and UHF, and then a little Baofeng handheld. And uh, that's on a little cable and <laughs> There's an old oven tray that I've put brackets into the wall and yeah, I know. Anyway, it works. <laughs> okay. Thanks ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now. Um, yeah, okay, so retuned now. Uh, how's that? Is that any better, uh, QSL? Yeah, you're 5 and 7 in the clear, but uh, no, not so much QLM here at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I understood the band's a little bit noisy, and uh, <laughs> well, it's nice to finally make a contact. Um, we've put up a big long wire today, a new earth stake in the ground, put a shelf on the wall, and we've got um, 3D printed brackets holding the shelf up with an Icon 706 Mark IIG, uh, a nice big 12 volt power supply and a made from junk MFJ roller tuner. Roller tuner. So that's what we're using on 40 today and thanks very much for the contact, uh, Doug, go ahead. Yeah, Roger, what, uh, what power are you running Howard? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, all of 100 watts, we're barefoot on this radio, QSL.